zingine mbili za nidhamu kuhusu sijui ni nguo ni, ni ile sare umevaa ama ni sijui ni kwa nini samani tu dakika moja tena seneta sifuna honorable speaker it is important that when you give such direction you make it clear under what provision of the law he has been allowed to dress like that because there are no rules for specific or individual senators the rules that are applied that apply to all of us so that uh, if if there is some uh, unique understanding of this uh, then we should know so that i also go and save uh, money on material instead of bringing a full sleeve i can wear half sleeve senator sifuna you know when i don't disclose some matters some some of the issues are private and that is why i did not disclose as a professional, I did not try to, to say the reason, but I said there is genuine reason that was given by the speaker to wear that way. I don't need to disclose whether maybe he has itchy arms or he has some problems in his body. So when the speaker gives direction, you just, uh, you just go by my direction kindly. So you out of wonder, Senator Sifuna. Senator Boni, also you had another point of wonder. Mr. Speaker, we cannot forever be wasting the time of this House on issue of dress code. Mr. Speaker, having pronounced yourself that there is a special circumstance that allows not just Senator Murangu but any other senator to enjoy that exception, then in the same breath, just clarify which that condition it is, so that should it be that Senator Sifuna has a similar condition, he can stand guided, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> now proceed and conclude, country. Hey. Mustafa the speaker na ona tukia na live itambindi wengine tutoa nguo hivi hili kudhirisha shinda zenye tukonazo. Kwa zababu, I must 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 I speak a siwezi toa nguo nikiambiwa na mheshimiwa Asifuna nitoe kwa sababu ni mwanaume kama mimi Must I speak nilikuwa nasema kwamba zile shinda ambazo tuko nazo katika eneo la Kirinyaga pia zinaambatana na mswanda bomu umeletwa katika mbunge hili na shemeji yangu Senator Wataita Taveta Johannes Mwaruma kwa sababu unaona ya kwamba ukienda katika mpaka Kirinyaga na Embu ambako walimu katika mazingira ambayo yanayofanana wengine wanapewa pesa za ziada kwa sababu ya mazingira magumu na wengine hawapewi ukiangalia kama ni mambo na lisha ya watoto wa shule za chekechea watoto wengi kutoka eneo la Kirinyaga wanabidi wavuke pande ile ingine kwa sababu kuna lisha na ili hali Kirinyaga mazingira ni yale yale kwa hivyo ningeuliza ya kwamba mambo kama yale yaweze kuzingatiwa kwa njia inayofaa ili kuhakikisha kwamba kuna usawa katika wale walimu wanafunza katika maeneo yale ili walimu wasihame ili wapate ama wapate mazingira ambao ni mazuri zaidi na wanatolekea wanatolokea maeneo mengine wanakoza kufundisha kwa sababu ya pesa za zianda kwa hivyo kwa mustahiki speaker nitakomea hapo na niseme kama kuna mtu ambaye anashinda zaidi anione kando nitamuelezea kwa nini niko namna hii asante sana mustahiki speaker asante Senator Wabu Enoch, Deputy Minority Rinda. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to comment on the petition uh, concerning our teachers and our hardship allowances. Mr. Speaker, I think a time is now ripe that this country must come up with a proper policy framework on which areas are classified as hardship areas and which areas are not. Because the speaker, it's actually a shame that there are some areas in this country which under the equalization uh, fund, they qualify for the fund because they are considered marginalized and therefore hardship areas. But when it comes to the issuance of hardship allowances to teachers, and civil servants working in those areas, they don't qualify. That's because there is need to harmonize the two. And, and I'm happy because we have that, that bill before us that we must insist that the uh, CRA, working with senators, 
and perhaps county governors uh, come up with a formula of determining which areas in this country are marginalized and therefore they are hardship areas where civil servants and teachers uh, qualify for that allowance. The speaker, I thank the petitioners led by the senator for uh, Taylor Taveta for bringing up that matter because it's a matter that is live in my county in Kitui. We need that matter harmonized for the teachers and the civil servants. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Wakiri Hirali, Kipurotich. I thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to contribute also to these two petitions. First, let me commend uh, the Honorable Senator Maruma for the petition, which uh, speaks to the interest of the teachers. Uh, indeed, it's time, uh, Honorable Speaker, that the current policy as is that deals with areas where the Teachers Service Commission has designated as hardship areas be reviewed. Um, it, it's noted, uh, Honorable Speaker, that uh, out of the very many uh, uh, areas which have already been earmarked, it only reflects a small section of the known areas that generally benefit from uh, the Equalization Fund, which has, uh, according to the statistics given, benefited uh, by virtue of devolution. Indeed, what was laid out in the petition by Honorable Maruma speaks to the volume and speaks to the challenges that a good number of teachers, not only in the particular county that has been referred to in the petition, but across the country. It is true that um, we still have a long way to go in terms of equitable uh, benefit to our employees in the, the Teacher Service Commission because of skewed uh, marginalization and benefits that comes with areas designated. For instance, in my county, Honorable Speaker, there are three areas within Chepalunku constituency that directly benefits from the equalization fund. Three, these three words, the words Sigor, Nyangores, and, 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 and Chebuno, directly benefit out of the equalization fund. Why? Because they are earmarked as areas that are hardship. And when we define hardship, uh, Mr. Speaker, it is exactly the nine or so listed challenges that such employees face while they are seeking to deliver the services to the people of Kenya. And so I supported the petition. And once that petition is assigned to a particular committee, I request such a committee to expand it in order not only to deal with the specific area where Honorable Senator Maruma has petitioned, but across the country so that in its resolution it expands to the whole country so that we speak to the challenges of all the teachers. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, the second petition, I support to the extent that we indeed need to amend the provisions of the law that deals with the roles and elections of uh, the deputy governors and uh, such other offices. However, that is a constitutional amendment that I know will require a referendum and therefore a committee cannot necessarily deal with such a petition to its conclusion other than making recommendations for purposes of uh, maybe advancing it to the, the National Dialogue Committee or enhancing it beyond that to deal with it as a popular initiative towards amendment to the Constitution. I therefore, Mr. Speaker, support the two petitions and I thank you.